All right. <clears throat> I'm ready for the Word of God. Anybody ready for the Word of God tonight? Tonight I want to talk to you from a subject that I have called renewing your mind. I know that I need to transform my mind. We all need to transform our minds. How many followers of Christ do I have in the house? If you are a follower of Christ, raise your hand, make a noise. If you're watching online, if you're watching online, make some noise as well. Your neighbors need to hear you. Do I have anybody who is 100% sold out for Jesus? How many will go where he sends you, do what he tells you to do? Anybody? The longer we follow Jesus, the more confident we should become. Somebody say amen. However, many times we can miss the whole point of following Jesus. And therefore, we need to transform our mind or renew our mind. Amen. Romans chapter 12, the first two verses is the basis of the sermon tonight. So let's go there, uh, Romans chapter 12, first two verses. I'm reading from the NIV. You read whatever version you'd like. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. The, this is your true and proper worship. Now, worship team, before we go to the next verse, worship team, I thank you for bringing us into the presence of God. However, the Bible is clear that the worship, the true and proper worship that God aspires from all of us is to live a life or offer up our bodies as a sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Verse 2. I feel like there should be a therefore there. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Renewing the mind. For those who are here in the house, and maybe you're watching online, anybody have a desire to break loose from the conformity to this world? Listen, we all, no matter how long we've been a Christian, sometimes we try to fit into this world, conform to the ways this world is. The sins that this world offers or bombards us on a daily basis are massive, amen? Anybody in the house desire to be transformed from, to be new from the inside out? Absolutely. Do you know there, uh, that, there, that the fish that we see swimming, they start to rot from the inside out? Sometimes a good looking fish can be nasty on the inside as a matter of fact when we were in um, on vacation one of the crabs looked good everybody look at my wife honey can you stand up for a second don't put the camera yourself but just stand for a second remember that last crab did it look good it looked good on from the outside how about the inside it spoiled all of our appetites. It looks so good from the outside, yet so miserable on the inside. Thank you, beautiful. Anybody in the house desire to be free from the works-based Christianity? Do, do, do. And finally understand it's done, done, done. <laughs> am I by myself in the house or am I talking to somebody? Do you desire to offer up your body as a living sacrifice so that your whole life becomes a spiritual act of worship? I do. See, when we read the Old Testament, we know that 
There were sacrifices. How many have read about the sacrifices? The gruesome details of the sacrifices. And the sacrifices that happened in the Old Testament, they were not living sacrifices. They were dead. You can't cut something open and expect it to live very long. The, sacrifice, the sacrificial system in the Old Testament was there to cover, somebody say cover, the transgressions of the people. And when Jesus came, he became a living sacrifice for you and me. If you've been covered by the blood of Jesus, if you have been renewed by the blood of Jesus, raise your hand, make a sound, dance if you have to, because my God has covered me. He took my place. Tonight I want to read a few passages for you. There's a lot of reading. I'm going to read quick just to get through the stories and I may cut something out just to make things more uh, time pleasing, I guess, if you may. But to, as we read the, the passages tonight, I w there's a few things I want you to remember. The disciples followed Jesus. Amen? Very simple. The disciples followed the best pastor, teacher there ever lived. Not me. Jesus. I got a thing or two to learn from Jesus. Amen? Somebody say amen. <laughs> they lived with him. They ate with him. They ministered with him. And yet, most of them doubted. Most of them had doubts. Let's go to Mark chapter 4 and read verses 35 through 41. <clears throat> As we read this, please keep in the back of your mind that, they, that these disciples, they lived with Jesus, breathed with Jesus, ate with Jesus, ministered with Jesus. Amen? Verse 35, Mark chapter 4. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over, over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. Stop there right there for just one second. So Jesus leaves the, boat, the, uh, the crowd behind. What was Jesus doing with the crowd? For those of you who have Bibles, you can read uh, up ahead. They were ministering. They were healing the sick. You can go to uh, Matthew uh, and read the Great Commission. Everything that Jesus told us to do as well. Amen? Jesus was teaching his disciples how to do ministry. They were healing the sick, raising the dead. Lepers were cleansed. And they get into this boat... And something happens. Jesus falls asleep. A furious squall came up. Verse 37. And waves broke over the boat. So that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern. Sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him up and said to him. Teacher don't you care. If we drown. Don't go any further. Just stay right there for just one second. What was Jesus doing? Sleeping. Was he one eye sleeping or two eyes sleeping? The Bible says he was sleeping. He was asleep. He was snoring. He needed rest. He was ministering for hours. He was human. 100% human. How many know that Jesus was 100% human? And he was 100% God. All at the same time. Amen? Amen? He needed rest. We all need rest. He was on vacation. A short vacation. Verse 39. Jesus got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who's this guy? Even the wind and the waves obey him. 
Faith is one of those things that needs to arise. I'm going to say, let faith arise. His disciples saw him ministering. His disciples saw the peace, somebody say peace, that was inside of him as he went to sleep. How many know that if you don't have peace, you don't sleep well? Amen? If you got worry, how many can sleep when they're worried? Anybody? No one. Maybe one. When you are worried, anybody ever heard of this expression, I am worried sick? Anybody heard of that? Worry can actually give you diseases that you should never have. Worry is not a peace thing. Worry is a fear thing. Somebody say it's a fear thing. How many know that you cannot tell the, the storm around you to calm down if you don't have peace inside of you? As a matter of fact, when Jesus was leaving this earth, he spoke to his disciples and he said, my peace, I'm going to say my peace, I give you, my peace, I leave with you. Not as the world gives. How many know that the world does not give peace? On Sunday, me and Tom, we were just talking about this a couple hours ago. On Sunday, we were expecting a big, big storm. How many were expecting a big, big storm? And the storm was stilled because we prayed at the east. Amen? We commanded it to go and it left. Jesus was in that storm. Amen? Jesus was in the storm, yet Jesus had peace about him. Now, for those of you who stayed home, I am not condemning you or saying anything wrong. You, you did what, what you, what you uh, thought was best for your personal self. Amen? Not condemning anybody, just to be, be upfront and honest. However, Jesus gives us peace. And when you were home, did you experience peace? I hope so, because the, the prince of peace was in the house. Amen? Or were you like these disciples, worried because there was a storm outside? It is not natural for us to worry. Worry and fear is not natural. We are not born with worry or fear. Do you know uh, when babies are born, they have two fears, if you may even call those fears. Do you know what they are? Not eating. Not eating. Okay, what is the other fear? Huh? I'm not sleeping, no. Babies are afraid of falling. Anybody not afraid of falling? Every, anybody afraid of falling? Can I push somebody just to make sure for the, if you're not afraid? <laughs> Babies are born with fear of falling. And if you leave them alone, it's a very crucial or very um, cruel experience that happened. A baby was left alone and it became wild. How many have heard of that? Yeah, this, is, this happened in the 30s or 40s. Do you remember what year that was, Tom? It was, it was a horrible experiment that some doctors were doing. That's how they find out the baby, babies have a fear of being alone. Falling and being alone. All the other fears are learned. When I stand on the ledge, some of you have a fear. Pastor's going to fall over. That's a learned fear. Let's go to Mark chapter 6 just... Go over a couple of uh, pages. Mark chapter 6, and we'll talk more about our favorite disciples. Maybe Peter will make an, uh, make an appearance. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for your journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, 
but not an extra shirt. However, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you, until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. Then they went out and preached that the people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. I'm going to stop there for a second. Jesus gives clear instructions. He sends two people out at once. How many know that it was a class project? Anybody ever go to school? Of course. Most projects, a teacher will pair you up with a buddy, amen? Right? Most projects. This was a learning experience. And as Jesus has showed them how to heal the sick, drive out the demons, heal, the, heal people, raise the dead, and he sent them out two at a time to put, up, put some practice in what they have learned. How many know that we need to practice what we learn? Oh, yes. Jumping down to verse 30, there's some stuff that Jesus was doing while the uh, disciples were gone. Starting with verse 30, again, this is Mark chapter 6. The apostle gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Stop right there for just one second. They went. They followed the instructions. Do I have any uh, people who like to follow instructions? If you, if you follow instructions well, would you raise your hand so I know who to pick on? If you raise your hand... Would, would you raise your hand if you follow instructions well? A few people, okay. I'm not going to call you tonight, but I, this is for, for, for future reference. Jeremy, do you follow instructions well? Raise your hand. Okay, he follows instructions. Verse 31. <clears throat> then, because so many people were coming and going, that they did not even have a chance to eat. He said to them, come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat into a solitary place. Stop there for another second. Who likes vacations? I think vacations should be mandatory. Vacations should be mandatory. Do what? Have them read about the Sabbath. Can't hear you. I'm sorry. Can you speak up louder? Vacations should be mandatory. As a matter of fact, Jesus in the Old Testament wrote six days work and the seventh day work harder. Work double time? Triple time? They pay double and triple on Sundays. Oh, that's the world. That's not Jesus. And the Sabbath, take one day to rest to come to the house of God. Amen? So Jesus tells them, guys, your class project was A+. plus. Amen? We understand this. Now go and find a place to rest. I'm taking a rest. For those of you who think I'm thinking, I'm taking a rest. I'm doing what Jesus told his disciples to do. Verse 33. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching, teaching them many things. How many know it's not a good idea to take Jesus on vacation? He'll make you work. Don't go on vacation without Jesus, please. That was a bad joke, okay? We got this. When you go on vacation, take Jesus with you. Got a few amen, amens. Waiting for a few more. Verse 35. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples called to him, this is a remote place, Jesus, they said. And, it, uh, and it's already very late. 
Send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. Jesus, we're on vacation. We packed lightly. These inconveniences on our vacation, can you send them away? Jesus, I know you feel bad for them because they are like sheep without a shepherd, but just tell them to leave. How many know where I'm going with this? But Jesus answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take more than a half year's wages. Jesus, that's a lot of money. And, and we, are we to go and spend that much on bread to give it to them to eat? Why would we spend our money on people who are messing with our vacation? This is Vasily's translation. For those of you who have read Vasily's translation. How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, five loaves and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to, uh, to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the, 50, the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves that he gave them to his, to his disciples to distribute to the, to the people. He also divided the two fish among all of them. They ate and were satisfied. And the disciples pick up 12 baskets full of broken pieces and bread and fish. The number of men who, were, who had been eaten was 5,000. Now, review, quick review. Jesus sends his disciples two by two, right? They see miracles, signs, wonders. I wonder how many people they fed on, while they were ministering. We don't know, right? But I'm sure this is, well, not I'm sure, I know that this is not the first miracle of feeding people. Amen? They broke bread with Jesus all the time. He said, I am the bread of life. Amen? Jesus liked eating with people. Anybody like eating with people? Do I have people who like to eat by themselves? I'd rather eat with people. The, the food tastes better even. Trust me. And as the class came to, comes together, Jesus says, everybody got an A plus, now take a break. And as they were taking a break, they became Pharisees. How many know that Pharisees were not interested in people, they just wanted themselves to have some value. Amen? But Jesus was trying to do something for them, and I have labeled my message tonight, renewing of the mind. Jesus wanted them to have a new perspective on how kingdom works. He was not interested in how the world works. He was interested how the kingdom works. Anybody with me? How many know that one plus one equals two? Two plus two equals four. Nine, 90 plus 10 equals 100, right? How many know that if you tithe, that 90 goes further than the 100? If you have experienced it, give some, raise your hand because others around you need to see that you have experienced this. Now let me tell you that the kingdom math, kingdom principles are not worldly principles. I, we already had an offering. I'm not going to ask for another offering. But I want you to understand that Jesus is trying to renew our minds even tonight. And the principles that he showed his disciples still work today. Some would say they still work today. Jesus sent them out. They came back. You would think after, you know, doing what Jesus told you to do, you would know that Jesus will never leave you or forsake you. Anybody with me? The word says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. 
As a matter of fact, Jesus told them many times, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'm going to try this side of the room. Jesus said many times, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I got a couple more amens. And yet when he tells them to rest, guys, take a break. Take a breather. Here's some water. Some cough drops. You need this. Somebody say, I need this. And as they're taking a breather, as they're on this cruise ship, going to the other side with Jesus on board, there's more work to be done. Jesus, I th thought you said to take a break. Why are we doing ministry on our cruise ship? Why? Well, it's time to put what you have learned into practice. How many know that ministry is not easy? Ministry is not easy, yet God refreshes you, God renews you, and he transforms your mind if you allow him to. Somebody say amen. And as the, the last example for, well, in chapter 6, Jesus says, Guys, I know you don't want to part with your money, but can I have some scraps? Five loaves and two fish is not a lot. Especially if you understand that the loaves, they're really five crackers and, f and two tiny fish. How many have been to Israel? Are, are the fish big when they're talking about? Yeah, so, you know, six, seven inches. They're not big. How about the loaves? We can get monsters to show you. They're small. This is one person's lunch. And Jesus wants to spread one person's lunch over 5,000 people? Yeah, that, that's only men. That's, yes. Jesus, your math is off. It, it will take a half year's worth of wages to feed these people. Jesus says, watch this. Let me renew your mind. Let me transform your mind. Anybody with me? And as Jesus does this miracle, to them it blows their mind because they have... They have experienced God's goodness and they have collected more than they put out, right? Let's go to Mark chapter 8. We'll start with verse 14 through the, down through 21 and then we'll skip a little bit. <clears throat> the disciples had forgotten to bring bread. These disciples aren't learning. Except for one loaf they had with them in the boat. Jesus speaks. Be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and, the, and that of Herod. They discussed this with one another and said, It is because we have no bread. Stop there for a second. How long have they been with Jesus? They've been together with Jesus for the past eight chapters. However long that is. This is Luke, uh, Mark chapter 8. They've been together for the past eight chapters. And when Jesus speaks to them, mind you, their minds are not renewed. They are with Jesus. See, you can travel with Jesus. You can do this Christian life. And yet never... Have your mind transformed. You can live a Christian life. You can be even the pastor, an elder, a deacon, a singer, a worshiper, yet never actually meet Jesus. How sad is that? 
They lived with Jesus. They preached with Jesus. They did miracles with Jesus. They even got an A plus on the assignment to go and do these things. Yet yeah, as soon as Jesus mentions bread, all of a sudden their carnal mind goes to, uh-oh, we forgot bread. Guys, there was 5,000 men last time and you had five pieces of bread. Jesus fed 5,000 men, and including women and children, that's about 50 to 20,000 people, with five pieces. Why are you worried about a single piece of bread? Because their mind has not been transformed yet. Let's continue reading. Verse 17. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes but fail to see and ears but fail to hear? And don't you remember when I broke the five loaves, for the 5,000 men, how many basketfuls of, basketful of pieces did you pick up? 12. Many t how many have children or have had children? And you know, you ask your children a question about something they have done, and they look, look down and they say, 12. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They haven't learned a lesson. They have not learned a lesson. And when, let's continue reading, verse 20. And when I broke seven loaves for the 4,000, how many basket, basket full of pieces did you pick up? Seven. How many know what I'm, what I'm doing here? I'm trying to give you a feeling for the passage that we need to transform our minds. Amen? He said to them, do you still not understand here, this is not in the Bible, but this is in my head. And I will do this my, in my way. Five loaves, two fishes, 5,000 people, 12 basketfuls. We need to gather 5,000 men, get five loaves and two fishes, and God will give us 12 basketfuls. Peter says, <clears throat> no, guys, we need seven loaves, 4,000 people, and then we will collect seven basketfuls because, see, we started off with seven, and we, got, we get seven back. It's one-to-one. -to, -one. to me, that's easy math. See that um, the other time Jesus did that, we had the fish and the bread mixed together, and I didn't like the, uh, the aftertaste of that. And Jesus says, guys, don't you understand? I am not, I don't care about the bread. I don't care about the fish. If you're hungry, I will feed you. What I want you to understand, I want you to renew your mind. Put your brain in the shop, if you may. Let's jump down to verse 27. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say that I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. I, I can only see Jesus shaking his head and saying, guys, you still don't get it. You still don't understand. I am not asking you about what other people say. I want you to understand who I am. And Jesus says, time out, verse 29. Time out. Guys, what about you? Do you know who I am? See, the only way that the disciples can know who Jesus is, see, I gave you plenty of examples. I could go, I could go back, but time doesn't allow us. I can go back and pull out many more examples where the disciples don't get it. Go to Acts chapter 1. Jesus died, resurrected, and they're walking. And Jesus is about to be lifted up. And they say, Lord, uh, is this the time you're restoring the kingdom? Guys, my kingdom is not of this world. Do you know who I am? 
I am trying to restore your mind. I am trying to explain to you who I am. And Peter jumps on and says, you are the Messiah, the son of the most high. This is when Peter's mind was renewed. Let's go back to Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> first two verses one more time. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. Stop right there. The patterns of this world is one plus one, two. Two plus two is 90 plus 10 equals... 100. That's the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. When your mind is transformed, then and then only can you understand that if you give seven pieces of bread, you get seven baskets full. I don't get it. Peter or John no if you have five pieces of bread and two fish you have more people and you collect more that's not what Jesus is talking about Jesus is talking about a transforming of my mind somebody say transforming of my mind and when my mind is transformed, then I will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I'm coming to an end. Can I have keys, please? My mind has to be transformed. Like I said, many times I said this. I want to say this again. We can walk with Jesus we can live with Jesus, we can fellowship with Jesus, we can do ministry with Jesus, but never actually know Jesus. Can we stand, please? Tonight, I use a lot of scripture to point to the disciples and their lack of a renewed mind. Not because I wanna make fun of, this, of the disciples, I love the disciples, especially Peter because I'm Peter let's be honest here but tonight I want our minds to be transformed there's people here and people watching online that need to break free of sinful habits go ahead hit the drums please there are people here in the room and watching online that need to learn to trust Jesus regardless of what is happening outside there's people here and people on, online that need to get fear out and get faith in there's people here and online that need to let go of their negativity worry insecurity anger frustration irritation there's people here and online that that the sin of your past is coming to hunt you and all of that leaves when you start growing closer to God when you start to understand that Jesus came he lived he died and he rose again in victory somebody say in victory Growing closer to God means I am leaving all this negativity, worry, insecurity, frustration, anger, irritation, fear. I'm leaving it behind. And in faith, I am taking a step by renewing my mind. Tonight, I am proclaiming, Jesus, you are God. You are my Savior. I love you, Lord Jesus. Just like Peter, he said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the Most High. That is when the transformation of the mind happens. The renewing of the mind happens when we let go of everything, when we let go of some logic sometimes. And we say, Lord, I surrender. I completely give away my myself. 
I don't understand how kingdom principles work, but I trust you. I have tried everything. I've tried Christianity. I've tried speaking in tongues. I've tried prophesying. I've tried everything. I've tried falling down. I've tried getting up. I, having done all to sin, I stood. I'm trying to understand. And God, I don't, I, I'm failing. Lord, I am done conforming to the patterns of this world. I am I'm asking you to transform me. I'm asking you to transform my mind by renewing it into your perfect image. Because I want to be test. I want to be I want to be able to approve what your good will is. Your good, perfect and pleasing will. If you're online, if you're here, just raise your hand. I say, Lord, I surrender. I give up. I need you. I need you more than I needed you yesterday. I need you more today than I have ever needed you in my life. I am done fighting you. I want to be transformed into the image of your son, Jesus. Have me. Take me as I am. I don't understand what I'm doing. I'm like the disciples. I, I, I pass a test. I fail a test. I get up. I walk. I stand. But I... Ultimately, I fail because, Lord, I don't trust you. But today, starting today, Lord, I'm starting to trust you. Continue this transforming work in my mind. Continue to renew my mind to who you are. I love you, Lord Jesus. Amen.